Okay, so my friend asked me to help with some modeling, and I decided to go and make a tutorial out of this. So a couple of things right off the bat. If I switch to lines mode, I will see there's a little bit of problem here. So I'll go to top view, and I'll turn off subdivision, and I'll see that I have these extra line here. Oops. Um, so what I would do with this is just go to edge mode, double click it, and go tab, and go or shift C, and go dissolve. That's the command. If you want your old commander back, press Shift F12, type in commander, and type in like find a legacy one, and you can attach a shortcut to it, minus tab now, and then you can use that instead of your new one if you don't like the new one. It's still a bit slow for me. Now, so um, I've already looked at this, and the thing is, it's not really symmetrical. And I can tell this because if I turn on symmetry here, and I go, let's go Z symmetry as well, and then I go to mesh, clone, and symmetrize, you'll see it moves a bit because it wasn't symmetrical. And the thing is now, if I go in, there will be a bit of problem here. Maybe not. Oh, look, it worked pretty cleanly this time. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's the symmetrize command in the new R24. Sometimes it has issues with symmetrizing, but this time it seemed to do a pretty good job. Ah, here it is, this is the issue. See, it messed up the inside here. Yeah, so we can't do that. Let's undo that. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to turn off our symmetry mode. We're going to turn off our thing here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to top view. I'm going to delete all the stuff that we don't need. So we're going to just keep one corner of this guy, this guy here. And then we're going to put him into a symmetry object. So holding the Alt key, make a symmetry object. So this one symmetrifies. And we will tick here. Um, weld is on. And maybe remove outside. No. That's cool. So we have this symmetry going on. And then we're going to put this guy into another symmetry object. So just hold Alt and symmetry again. But this time switch symmetry to off and plus minus Z. There we go. As you can see, there's a bit of a distance here. So what we want to do is we want to select these points, which are no, these ones here. And we want to scale them. So scale tool and then hold this and then hold the shift key and it'll snap to zero. So you get them right exactly in a straight line. And then in the Y coordinate Z is blue here. So change it to zero. And now we should have, in theory, a perfect symmetrical object in four axes. And if we turn on our subdivision, ta-da. Okay, so that's the first thing fixed. We have, ah, bummer. <laughs> okay, we nearly got it fixed. Now, what is the problem here? Why don't these guys want to be symmetrical? Mm. Oh, because we don't have weld on the second one. I'm going to turn on welding. There we go. All good. False problems. Very good. So now that we have these guys selected, we can now right click on this and go current state to object. Um, just hide it. We can delete this guy now. We don't need him. So there you go. We have a symmetry object. It is symmetrical. Um, just top here. All right, maybe we can just leave it. Nah, let's make it easy this way. This just guarantees that we are in fact working in symmetry. And now we can turn on symmetry mode here, and it should mean that when we move stuff around, it all moves symmetrically. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make this thing into a circle at the top, right? So let's turn on our subdivisions. Let's select this and this edge. And we want to select all these edges around as well. We could go around manually select them, but actually, if you go, if you have the symmetry turned on, you can go like you can just move this if you want. You can just move it into with the green thing. You can move it close to the circle uh, center, but uh, it's not uh, very accurate. I want to scale it from the center. So what I would do is I go to select, and there's this thing called symmetrize selection. Boom. And now when you press scale and on the green one, make sure it's green because if you do it just empty, it'll scale them vertically as well. And you only want this 2D scale. There you go. And Q can toggle the subdivision on and off. So you have the circle now. Now I will make these edges into a selection. So I'll go selection, edge selection, this one. Yep, I have a, I have a shortcut to this. So it just automatically makes this guy here. So now whenever I need it, I can double click it and I have it. And it kind of broke. Okay, let's try this again. Selection, symmetrize, selection. It's just in here, select and there you go, store selection. That's what I want. There you go. 
And now I can select some other edges and go back to this and we have this when we need it. So that's step one. Then if we want to change the size of a circle, let's go into our loop selection and let's go into faces a bit easier. So these faces and these faces in here and scale them in again with just the green triangle here. So you can control the size of this guy. If you want it to line up with the circle below, you just go from top view and you can line it up like so. But our bottom circle has a bit of a problem, but it's not really a circle, it's a square which is subdivided and it doesn't really make a perfect circle. So let's fix some stuff while we're here. Um, when you do, uh, when you want to add hard edges, you will usually add loop cuts, the subdivisions. If you want to make something harder, like for example here, you want to make this into a tight corner. If you use the knife loop cut tool and you add it here, see it'll give you a sharper corner. Um, some people have different ways of doing this. For example here, see he's made this kind of square that terminates and while it makes this cleaner, it doesn't really make modeling easier, especially if you want to change the shape of this. So what I would suggest doing and what I did here is firstly, I'll go through and add, let's go to our knife line tool, so not the loop cut. I will add a loop cut, I mean, I'll add a line cut here. So it goes all the way across. And then I will go down here and I will add this line cut here. And let's make a loop cut here. By the way, if you hold shift, it'll snap to various like 50%, 25%. So hold shift and make a cut here. It'll be exactly in the middle. And you'll have it on all sides. And then I'll go back to, this is a square, but it's temporary, don't worry. And then I'll go to KK again for my knife tool and just connect these guys two together. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to remove these edges here. I don't want this edge and I don't want this edge loop here. So I double click on it in edge mode and move tool. And then I want to go tab and dissolve. There you go, boom, they're gone. And slight problem here, uh, maybe optimize. There you go. Maybe there was a spot somewhere. So we have this done here now. Now our next issue, I'll tell you in a middle minute in a minute how to get rid of this, how to fix this, what we just did. Um, but let's move down here and let's fix these guys first. So it's a circle again. So what we want to do is we want to select these, I guess these edges here. And we want to make sure we don't have anything up here selected. So unselect this. That should be cool. We just move it randomly to see if we're moving anything that we don't need. No, this is all the right stuff. Undo. So then we just want to again, we want to move them out. Either if you want, you can do it by eye, or you can go select symmetrize selection and then just scale them out with a green triangle and you'll get a circle. And then you can do the same thing. You can just go, uh, if you want to scale all of these in to make it smaller, just select. Uh, more of the edge loops, so select select all of these edge loops, like shift and these guys here and make sure we don't have anything selected up top here. I'm just holding control and dragging a rectangle. And once we have these guys selected, check again, double check there's no problems on the top, okay good. Um, we can just scale with the green dot, so there you go. Although right now it's acting kind of weird because not all selected. So let's go to select, symmetrize selection. There you go. Ah, the inside circle probably also needs to be selected. Let's go UL and select that. And R. Nope, we don't have this one <laughs> selected either. So these guys probably need to be selected too. Now let's go scale. There we go. So we can scale it to whatever size you want and you can do this from the top view here and you can match them so they're the same size as the outer circle. And here you can also actually match the other edges to be an exact circle. So let's scale this guy down. Okay, so we got that out of the way. You can tweak that as, as you want. Now, the next step I wanna talk about is beveling the edges. Because right now, as you notice, if we turn on subdivision surface, we will uh, get this very smooth corners. Now, so what I would prefer is instead of adding loop cuts to support the corners, uh, because even like here, here the loop cut worked well because you added it and it became tighter like so, or if you delete it, it'll become softer. But what I prefer to do to make, to keep this object more editable, because right now if I want to change the way this corner is, I have to click, I click on this and it, see it's not really, I've cycled three of these and I'll destroy the shape. So what I prefer 
is I prefer to add selection sets and then add a bevel deformer. So for example, if I select this loop here, it'll go all the way down here. Actually, I don't need it. I don't need it all the way here because it's a circle. Um, I probably just want it on this corner. <coughs> and same thing here, I don't really need it. Let's control and rectangular selection this out. I don't really need it here. That seems about right. And let's make this again, select, symmetrize selection. Or you can manually select them. And then let's make a selection set tilde s and call this bevels. Now, underneath this guy, let's drop a bevel deformer. Turn off use angle and drag our the selection set into it, so into here. And switch this to 0 0.01 or whatever size of your thing is. And you'll see now we have this little bevel here. And if we turn on our subdivision, see it actually gives us the bevel. If we turn it off, it goes like this. And we can change the size of this bevel now. So we can double it if you want. We can make it, or we can make it 0.5. No, that's too big. 0.05. There you go. Now, you'll notice we have some issues here. Let's have a look what's going on. Ah, because we don't have a selection. So let's add these guys. Let's go shift and add these selections. Add these little look guys here and click on this and go update and now we turn subdivision and there you go it's a nicer smoother thing and we can also change here we can change the amount of subdivision so we can change it from zero to one so if we turn off sub we'll see that in our loop that we'll see that right now we have one subdivision before we had zero subdivisions so we can add these subdivisions to make it make the rounding more hard or we can change it to a solid subdivision which is just useful for bevels but it does, uh, check how it works depending on your model. It doesn't always work perfectly, so sometimes chamfer is better. And just adding a division will make it sharper or just make this smaller. It, you really need to play around with it to see what works for you. And if we want, for example, we want to bevel around here, right? Uh, we can go to our object and go to edge mode and make sure we've selected and just go UL for loop mode and just holding the shift key, just add this. And then click on your bevel selection and go update. And now when we turn on subdivision, you'll see that we have a nice bevel here as well. See, without, this, with, without, with, with. And yeah, that's basically how it works. And if just to make things easy as well with these polygons here, for example, that we have selected, we can also make these into a selection. So set selection. Um, no, it's not here. I don't know, I have a shortcut, whatever it's. Store selection, there you go, oops. There you go. So if we select something else, we can always come back to this and scale it to make sure the circle is the right shape. And that's my tips for working with a bevel deformer. Um, you might also want to um, hear the same thing. I would also, and you can also apply multiple of these guys together. I'm pretty sure. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> like uh, deleting these, like see right now, I didn't delete these loop cuts because I was just leaving it for reference. But you can also replace these loop cuts with a bevel deformer too if you want. And I'm pretty sure you can stack bevel deformers so you can have different size bevels. Something to experiment with and just use different selection tags. But it does make modifying everything easier because you don't have so many edges. Like even this is a nice sharp um, circle, but there's no, see there's no, you don't have to deal with so many points. So there you go, hope this was helpful, enjoy. Don't forget to check out my shop for, you know, rigs and all kind of other stuff.